An inquiry into the fine print of the Voice to Parliament referendum proposal has continued its hearings in Orange today. These meetings are being held against a backdrop of animosity around the response to child abuse in the Northern Territory. Sky News Northern Australia correspondent Matt Cunningham has been following developments in the Territory for many years and he spoke a short time ago with Labor MP and Alice Springs local Marion Scrimgeour. You live in Alice Springs. Tell us your impression of the situation on the ground there at the moment. Yeah, look, it goes up and down, Matt. I think, you know, the, the issue of youth crime, and that's what I was trying to say last week, we've got serious issues with youth crime, and I think the business community, but the community in general across Alice Springs, everyone's had enough. And we can't keep avoiding that we've got... There is increasing numbers of young people um, doing things that they shouldn't be doing. And so you've got two, two issues. There's the child protection issue and then there's the youth crime issue. And we've got to, we've got to deal with both of them. You also make the point in this uh, opinion piece you've written that it's neglect primarily that you're concerned about. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the, the statistics that have just come out and, and you know, nationally there are there is data there, and when you have a look at a lot of that data, a lot of it is child neglect. Now, people might think that that's not important, but that's where you get the really high-risk issues happening. So if a child is being neglected, then they are more likely to be at risk of sexual abuse. So we need to unpack all of that and have a look at what is happening uh, with those children that are falling into that category of neglect because those numbers are increasing and not just in Alice Springs but right throughout the Northern Territory because that national data is not just Alice Springs, it is data that's coming from the system um, that's collecting data right throughout the Northern Territory. So we need to unpack region by region, where are we seeing those increased numbers? Catherine, I, I was talking to people in Catherine, there are increasing numbers in Catherine. I was in Tennant Creek recently and there are issues in Tennant Creek. So enough's enough. We've got to look at what do we need to do to put some solutions on the table rather than talking about this and using these vulnerable kids as political football. And you have come up with a specific um, solution around family responsibility. You, you, you talked about this more than a decade ago, but tell us about your plan. Yeah, look, the Family Responsibility Commission works very well in North Queensland. Um, I wrote to Jenny Macklin when she was the Minister back in 2011 to look at if, if, you're, if federally the government is supporting the establishment of this commission in, in Queensland, uh, given the, you know, because at that time there were real issues with child protection both in Hope Vale, Arakoon, Yarraburra and places in North Queensland, um, that this could work in the Northern Territory. Um, for whatever reason, it was never supported for the Northern Territory. I've had a look at, over many years, looked at the Family Responsibility Commission, which is not headed by a bureaucrat or a public servant. That commission is headed by a judge. And there's a simple reason for that, is that you've got to have these family responsibility agreements through a court-mandated process. And families have got to be managed through that process and part of it means that they have to be income managed and, and not just 50% or 80%, they have to be 100% income managed until they can go through that process to show that they've turned their lives around with the interest of those children uh, to be central, to be part of this. And this is also done in consultation with senior Aboriginal leaders, isn't it? Absolutely. So they sit on the commission uh, from those communities and they advise the commissioner in terms of the way to go forward. So Aboriginal people are part of the solution and that's what we need to have here. I mean, we're talking about the voice. This is a very good example of that you could have Aboriginal people uh, working through this process with a judge, now it could be a retired judge, the same as what they've got in Queensland, but we have to put those frameworks in place. If it works over there, it'll work over here. There's been a lot of 
um, political discussion in the past week or so since Peter Dutton's visit yeah. to Alice Springs. It sounds to me, though, like that aside, what you want to see is practical action to get some of these issues fixed. Yeah, look, I, I was listening to um, Peter Dutton's comments, to Jacinta, to a lot of people that have been commenting on this. But I've yet to see any solutions on the table. This could be something that I think all of us should be, in a bipartisan way, getting behind and working towards trying to get the best outcome for the Northern Territory. I don't care who champions this. this. I've, I've put it on the table. I do want to see it work between both governments because I know that it can work. It needs the federal government to enable some enabling legislation and then it needs the, the territory government to then establish through their legislative frameworks. We can do it, Matt, and I think with all the money, the federal government could put the, the funding and the resources towards it. Um, you know, we, we're talking about $250 million for Alice Springs. Surely some of that money could be used for this. And not just in Alice Springs, though. No, you this has to be for the whole of the Northern... This has to be for the whole of the Northern Territory. We haven't just got child protection or, or neglect issues in Alice Springs. We've got them throughout the Northern Territory. Let's have some truth in this debate and let's look at how do we both all work together to try and get the best outcome for Territory kids. You've got a seat at the table in the Federal Government now. You've got the ear of Linda Burning, the Minister yep. for Indigenous Australians, and the Prime Minister. Have you had discussions? Will you have discussions? Or do you think? Yeah, look, I, I've had a I've had a discussion with the Prime Minister's office um, about since that incident happened in in Darwin. I think Minister Burney is is supportive of this. We need to work through some of those issues. So look, I've I've sent him my my opinion piece. I've also had discussions with Malandiri. I'm going to have. The those discussions with Luke Gosling, who is uh, also wanting to be part of this. So I think if all of us can come together and put our political will to this, it'll happen and, and it can work, but it needs us to all stop playing politics with this. And to work with the Northern Territory Government, I think this is a way forward. Uh, Kate Warden and I have had a discussion about it and we're going to meet in Alice Springs on the 22nd to look at how do we put some meat on the bones with this. Do, do you think it's been suggested that some of these issues are beyond the capability of the Northern Territory Government? Do you think that's true or do you think they have the ability? No, look, I, I think they can do it because when we say it's beyond their capability, Matt, we're, we're putting down or demonising the staff that are at the coalface of all of this. And we've got some fantastic practitioners in the Northern Territory. We have, you know, some great men and women in the police force and we have some fantastic child protection practitioners and I've talked to a lot of them, I've worked with a lot of them, we've got to stop demonising them. You know, the work and the investigation that needs to go into this area uh, needs to be done in a methodical, confidential way and it does happen but they don't need us politicians demonising them or playing politics with it.